Today I'm going to show you how to make spear and decoys for a lot less than anything you're going to see to buy on eBay or a lot less time than what you see for making them on YouTube and everybody on YouTube says you need fancy airbrush kits or you need a Dremel or you need fancy paint or you need to put a clear coat on them. But you take all this garbage, throw it away. You don't need any of that. Alright. Yeah, you can spend $20 and get a nice Bear Creek decoy all ready to go, balanced, and it'll turn to the left for you real nice. But for 10 minutes of your time, you can make a nice little decoy that'll work for you for almost nothing out of anything you can find out of your garage. This is just a little piece of wood that I found laying around. And cut it up with a handsaw, put a bolt through it for the weight, and found a little piece of aluminum with some self-tappers in the bottom, and works just fine. All the paint on it is just sharpie. It doesn't fade away in the water. I haven't had a problem yet. I've already just made this one last week, and we've got three fish on it and two sits, so it works pretty dang good. I mean, you can't go wrong with a cheap decoy like this. Let's get started on making a decoy. First of all, you're going to need your piece of wood and just regular old hand saw. Uh, choose how much of it you want. I'm going to say roughly 7 inches. Alright, now you just got your 6, 7 inch piece of wood. Doesn't really matter however big you want it. Not an exact science. The fish ain't going to know any better. Alright, I like to take the back and cut a little slot down and up on the, both the top and the bottom. To try to make a little bit of a tail to it. Alright, so now we hand sawed our tail in there. We're going to go ahead and make an angle on the front to try and make it kind of look like it's got a face. got the face angle cut. Don't worry about how slanted you are or how perfectly straight your line is. This isn't an exact science. It don't have to look pretty. Those pike aren't the smartest things out there in the world. They're not going to know if it's a piece of wood versus if it's a fish. If you don't have a vise, it makes it a lot easier to take a C-clamp and clamp a piece of wood down to your table. That way you can cut it a lot better with a handsaw. Now that we got our basic shape down, we're going to go ahead and put our bottom fins on. These are just a couple pieces of sheet aluminum I cut into squares that I had laying around. I'm going to hold these pieces of aluminum in with just a couple little tiny self tappers. You can probably buy a hundred of them for five bucks or less. I'm not really sure what they cost, I just found them. drill a hole through the center with a drill bit to install a bolt. This bolt with these washers is going to be your counterweight. That way you don't have to heat up any lead or install any lead. It works just fine. I like to put mine a little bit towards the back fin. That helps it sit kind of on an upward angle. Take your bolt, you want to stick it through from the top to the bottom because your two nuts are going to weigh more than the bolt head. That will keep it sitting like this. Otherwise when you drop it down in the water, it's going to flip upside down and really look like a dead fish. After you get the nuts on, don't worry about the extra thread sticking out. The fish aren't going to run away from a little extra hardness sticking out of the bottom of the fish. Now you're going to have to buy some of these little tiny screws 
They come probably in a pack of 10 or 20. They're less than a dollar. And you screw it in. I like to screw mine about right at the top of the face wherever I make that. So I'll screw it in about right here. And then when I drop it in the water, when I go out fishing, if I don't like that, I'll just unscrew it and screw it in a better spot to get that fish to sit about as level as possible. You pretty much have your fish ready to go. Last thing you need to do is put some sort of color on it, although I'm pretty sure you could spear one just like this, dropping it down in the hole. But we'll go ahead and put some color on it. And we're going to use some fancy, high expensive paint here, your normal Sharpies. As you can see, I've done both of these. I've done a blue one and I've done a red one. Did some polka dots on them and did some checker flag stripes on here just because I'm bored. Fish ain't going to know any better. I think it kind of looks cool. So we'll just make this one normal. We'll go ahead and draw a line for our face. And then we'll draw a line on the tail. And then color that in. And remember, it don't have to be perfect. I like to put a little bit of red on the fins. I don't know why. It just makes me feel better. Alright, I'm all done with the red. I think I'm going to do a polka dot pattern like I did with this one. I kind of made some ribs in it with the grinding wheel. Uh, if you really want to get carried away, you could do the same thing with your hand saw. Take it down an angle like this. You can get as carried away as you want to make them scales in there. I really don't think they're necessary, but if you feel like it. Go ahead and give them some character. Give them some nice eyeballs. You know, give them a, it's a really nice fish. Big eyes, but a really nice fish. Give somewhat of a smiley face, you know, because your fish is going to be real happy down there swimming in the water. I'm going to spice it up a bit. I'm going to throw some red polka dots in there too. And there you have it. A decoy pretty much made for free. Had the bolt laying around. Had the screws laying around. Had the wood laying around. Had the metal laying around. The only thing I really got any money into is I think I paid a dollar maybe 99 cents for a pack of these i think there might have been 20 in a pack 10 150 i don't really remember i know there's a bunch of them um it really don't cost much to make a decoy you get a small piece of wood take a hand saw cut your holes in it i mean you can get some sharpie for paint you probably don't need it you could probably just run the straight wood um if you don't have anything you can come up with for fins laying around i mean you could run your bolt or whatever you find for making your weights. It don't have to be a bolt. Anything that weighs something that can pull your piece of wood down. You can throw it in your sink and then that'll let you know if it floats or goes down or 
how fast it falls. You don't need to take it out in the water to test it. You can test it at home before you bring it out there. There's several other things I've used before I started making my own decoys. And yeah, I've bought the decoys at the store. But, I mean, they work. Obviously, they work good. But I've had better luck on these. And uh, Speckles here, to be exact, works very good. Um, Lightning McQueen used to be in much better shape, but it's taken a lot of beating over the past years, and it's still holding up. The wood hasn't fallen apart or anything, so that's a bonus. But I have used jerk baits. Just screwed in one of those screws in the top of a jerk bait, getting it to sink. Maybe had to put a couple bigger hooks on it to get it to fall just right. They will come into this jerk bait, but you're still going to have better luck on something like this than a small profile jerk bait. Um, I've had good luck on the swim bait. I get a lot of bites and catch a lot of fish on this. But you get one less tip up when you put this down in the hole because it does have hooks on it. You can take the hooks on it, but then it won't sink. So a straight piece of wood like this, you're not going to get that nice circle turn with every time you twitch your rope to go up and round to keep your, keep your decoy in your hole. Uh, most of the time they're just going to dart out and then slowly fall back in. You can play with the fins. You bend the fins down. You can bend the fins up. And that will help you get that turn or get you that sinking faster or sinking slower. Or however you want to fall. The fins will really adjust a lot of that. If you want to put in a little extra time, if you take your handsaw and cut on an angle on the tail, like I did on this blue one, you see how the tail's a lot thinner on the blue one going across this way. Um, that'll get you at that nice circle fall every time it goes down. Um, Lightning McQueen here also has an angled tail. There you have it. All you gotta do is get a little bit creative. This really doesn't cost much money to get into. You don't have to buy a fancy decoy. You don't have to buy a top of the line, hand carved, airbrush sanded down with the best primers on it with the best clear coats on it you don't need all that all you need is just a basic piece of wood in the shape of somewhat of a fish and you'll be able to draw them in i'll probably be putting out videos of using this exact decoy to spear some pike or at least bring some pike in if i can hit them we all know i'm not the most accurate one good luck out there and have fun spearing